Where should the Touring Anglers Association go to next for their next tournament? That's what we're going to talk about right now. If you like this kind of content, click that like and subscribe button and welcome to the team. Now, if you haven't heard of the Touring Anglers Association, they are technically the world's largest pot fishing tournament and not that kind of pot. The TAA has had one somewhat successful tournament and what they do differently is that they don't allow forward facing sonar. On April 15th, they told us on their Facebook page that they would be announcing where their next tournament will be held. And luckily, I haven't been holding my breath because it is May 13th as of right now. now now the TA has to look at lots of reasons or lots of places to go. They need to have the facilities for the anglers. They need to have the facilities for the place to watch to do the weigh-in and people watch and make the place big enough that people aren't on top of each other. And if things are working well, maybe they can get some sort of sponsor, some sort of CVB, Convention and Visitor Bureau, to pay or pay for some of their fees and things like that at the event. That's the goal to having a tournament. You can put that money back into to tournament fees. And I should mention that the TA does almost 100% payback to the people who are in it, to the anglers. And that's very exciting for a lot of people. When you figure in the last tournament they had just under 50 and only $5,000 came out to pay for little things that had to be paid for, that money going back to the anglers is pretty, is pretty nice. But where do they go for their next tournament? That's the key. And I've taken a little bit of time to think about where, where I would like to see them to go. Now this has nothing to do with anybody else. And when I look at this, I'm looking at where it's going to be good for the facilities, where it's going to be good because there isn't forward facing sonar that the anglers can catch big fish. You want to have good docks or you want to have stumps or you want to have some place where those fish can kind of hide and those anglers can catch fish because you don't want to have a fishing tournament and then have seven pounds be first place. You want to see some decent sized fish come over the, come across the stage. So it needs a place where no, forward-facing sonar can happen and at the, at the same time allow anglers to catch good fish. And while it might sound crazy, I think it needs to be centrally located. While I think going out to California would be great, I think that might be too far for their second tournament. So staying in this general vicinity on the East Coast would be beneficial to the TAA. And at the same time, I think there needs to be, you need to try to draw a little bit of a crowd. You need to have enough anglers to be able to show up to participate. And you need a place where I feel like fishing licenses and the money spent in in that state should be one of the top states for fishing. And when I say that, Florida is the one of, is the number one place where the most amount of money is spent. Texas is second. Third is California, and I have to read this. Fourth is Minnesota. Fifth, Michigan. Sixth, Ohio. Seven, New York. Louisiana, Oklahoma, and Georgia round out the top 10. And I believe what made or helped make the first TA successful was that group of YouTube people that not only that not only broadcasted and shared the way in i think that was extremely important and i think it was uh, i think it was genius to do too because all these channels worked together these three or four channels worked together and their community watched that watched those weigh ins and when i look at it from my channel alone i know that i probably had 7 or 8000 people watch videos that i did over 3 days talking about the taa and i don't get a lot of views that's the God's honest truth. I try real hard, but I don't get a lot of views. And those were very successful videos for my channel. And I realized that I know they said they were going to tell us on April 15th that it does take time. And it's it's reasonable to look at all the venues and find out which makes the best sense for the TAA. If I have to look at it outside of the box or where I think the anglers or where the TAA should go, I look at it from a, a standpoint of where are they going to catch fish? Are they going to catch good fish? Do they have the right facilities? Is it sensitive? centrally located and what is the fishing like and I get four or five really four places that I think TA should head next the first place is in Texas in Lake OHIV here's why I like OHIV I like that there's a lot of stumps and places like that where fish can suspend and they can fish the anglers can fish so I want to see these anglers be able to catch big fish and OHIV is known for having big fish I also think that they can use the success of the big bass splash with the amount of anglers that went there. Now, it's $5,000 to join this, but the amount of anglers that join that big bass splash was, is second to none. It's the biggest amateur fishing tournament of all time. And maybe some of those guys can afford the entry fee to the TAA. So OHIV is number one. Number two, I think Felsmere.
Felsmere, down here in Florida. Now, Fels Felsmere is called the Stick Marsh for a lot of people when you get down here. And the Stick Marsh is known for having a lot of flo floating vi uh, floating grass, a lot of weeds, a lot of places to punch and do kind that kind of fishing. And I think that's important. Not to mention, it's a place where anglers can catch giant fish. Now, I know the Stick Marsh is catch and release only, so there might be some hidden problems with that. But a place like stick marsh would be absolutely great for the anglers and great for everybody else because the pl the places you want to go you want to draw a crowd in you want to get people to to come out and watch if possible and i think at felsmere and the stick marsh you might get a good crowd so my number two place is the stick marsh the third place i think the ta should go to is toledo bend and that is in louisiana and texas now this is a big body of water and there's always big fish again this is somewhat centrally located people from the west coast can can come to Texas or Louisiana and the people from the East Coast can go there too. I do realize that if it's too far you're not going to get as many anglers but you have to really kind of follow some of the places the big professional organizations go to because they have done the research for you on that body of water and Toledo Bend is just awesome. I think they'll catch lots of fish, they'll catch big fish and it would be a great place to go. And then my fourth place I think is Lake Murray. The leets are there right now and honestly forward-facing snow played a big part of what's going on there but there's still a lot of docks and places to go catch them sh up shallow and that kind of fishing is really important if you're not using forward facing sonar so i think lake murray would be an absolutely ridiculously great place to go for the taa on their second event now where do you think they should go we're going to find out hopefully soon i don't know when i think alan was going to at one point text me or call me or something i have never heard back from him but he's probably really busy and that's not a big deal but where do you think they should go for their second event also do you think they should lower the entry fee that so that amateur anglers join and not be a majority of professional fishermen or anglers who have a lot of extra income that would like to be professional anglers tell me in the comments below i really would appreciate it so there we have it where should ta go for the next event we'll find out if you like this kind of content click that like and subscribe button and welcome to the team remember take a kid fishing get your fish on i'll talk to you very soon cheers